Welcome to the Infectious Disease Evo Ad video series. In this series of videos, we'll be looking at the biology of the novel coronavirus, SARS-CoV-2, and the resulting disease that it causes, COVID-19. Infectious disease is a leading cause of human mortality, and it has been throughout all of human history. An infectious disease is a term referring to an illness resulting from infection. Infection occurs when an infectious agent invades the tissues of an organism. Some broad categories of infectious agents, also known as pathogens, include viruses, bacteria, fungi, and parasites. But since we'll be talking about SARS-CoV-2, let's focus on viruses. So what is a virus? Generally, a virus can be defined as a submicroscopic pathogen, usually regarded as non-living complex molecules. The reason why they're considered non-living is because they don't actually contain their own cells or cellular machinery like living organisms do. They do contain DNA or RNA, but they're only capable of replicating by infecting living cells by hijacking their own cellular machineries. And usually this causes illness in the process for the living organism. But where did viruses come from and why do they even exist in the first place? Well, in the natural struggle for replication and survival, individual organisms are frequently adapted to exploit others. In ecological terms, this is referred to as a parasitism, which is classified as a relationship between two organisms where one benefits at the expense of another. Consider your friendly neighborhood mosquito. Mosquitoes are considered parasitic towards humans and other mammals because they benefit from acquiring blood as food, but we experience the cost of losing some blood and in some cases even having diseases spread to us. So in the same way, viruses are also ecological parasites where the viruses benefit from having the ability to reproduce in the host, which is very important. And the hosts experience the costs of having their cells hijacked and resources taken from those cells and even the energy costs required to mount an immune response to deal with that viral attack. As for their origins, viruses are thought to be almost as old as life is on Earth itself. As all life forms from animals to plants to archaea and even bacteria can be infected by viruses. For most of human history, humans were mostly unaware of the mechanisms that underlie infectious diseases. Aside from the basic observations that sick individuals may spread their illnesses to others, and illnesses may originate from non-human sources such as pests and contaminated water and food. In the mid 1600s, a series of scientific advancements set way for the discovery of the microscopic roots of infectious disease. In 1676, Van Leeuwenhoek invented a rudimentary microscope which allowed us to observe microbiology for the first time. And in 1860, Pasteur experimentally demonstrated that microorganisms are the actual cause of some diseases. In 1955, Salk develops the polio vaccine, which led to the near eradication of the disease. And this event really set the stage for future inoculation efforts, including those for COVID-19. The COVID-19 pandemic wasn't the first pandemic in human history, and unfortunately, it won't be the last. In 1918, following the conclusion of the First World War, humanity was immediately hit with another crisis in the form of the most severe global pandemic in recent history, the flu pandemic of 1918. The virus was estimated to have resulted in at least 50 million deaths worldwide, and this is back when the world population was only 1.8 billion. On March 11, 2020, the World Health Organization officially declared COVID-19 a pandemic caused by the SARS-CoV-2 virus that originated in Wuhan, China. By now, the virus had already spread around the globe. The result was an unprecedented impact on the structure and functioning of our society. It dramatically and unexpectedly changed the way we worked, socialized, and even how we interacted with our loved ones. So what makes SARS-CoV-2 such a dangerous virus and why did we have to take such extreme public health measures to protect ourselves from it? Well, the general impact of a virus can be defined by two general factors, virulence and transmissibility. Virulence is the severity or the harmfulness of an infection or the symptoms it presents. Transmissibility is the ability for a pathogen to transmit or pass on from one host to another. And SARS-CoV-2 has high virulence and high transmissibility, making it a very unique virus. So in contrast, SARS-CoV-1 from 2002 had high virulence, 
but it wasn't nearly as transmissible as SARS-CoV-2. So we were able to detect and isolate individuals who were infected and eradicate it before it could become a public health crisis. So far, COVID-19 infection has been associated with at least 6 million deaths, but mortality isn't the only factor associated with virulence. Firstly, the potential long-term costs of COVID-19 are currently unknown. In some cases, those who have now been dubbed as COVID long haulers have described extreme neurological, respiratory, and cardiovascular symptoms persisting for months after infection. Additionally, severe cases that lead to hospitalizations can put an immense strain on the healthcare system, which may reduce the access to care for individuals who need it for other health conditions. On top of this impact, SARS-CoV-2 is highly transmissible. It's an airborne virus, meaning it transmits through small droplets released during exhalation. Generally, transmissibility can be quantified by what is known as a reproductive number, or an R value. The R value represents the average number of individuals a contagious person typically goes on to infect. So an R, R value of two would mean an individual would on average infect two other people, and a value of three would mean an average of three other people would be infected. When the R value of a virus is greater than one, that means it's spreading through the population, and when it's less than one, it's dying out. During the initial wave of the coronavirus, the R value of SARS-CoV-2 was estimated to be somewhere in the range of two to three. To put that into comparison, the typical seasonal flu has an R value of about 1.25. Although we're learning new things about SARS-CoV-2 every day, the underlying biological mechanisms of COVID-19 have been under extensive study these past two years and can be applied to our existing understanding of the mechanisms of evolution of viruses and other infectious diseases. In this video series, we'll look at the biology of SARS-CoV-2 and the disease it causes in more detail. We'll explore how viruses invade our bodies at the cellular level and how they hijack our own machinery to replicate their own genetic material. We'll also take a look at how viruses mutate and evolve. And finally, we'll explore the novel technologies used to resist and treat COVID-19. Well, that's all for this video and we'll see you in the next one.